everybody, David R. Becker here this morning. Happy Sunday morning. And we're here to watch me practice. <laughs> so this morning I'm going to be doing a, um, I've been wanting to do this wet street scene. Um, and I'm going to show you what I've done with the drawing and with the, with the image. So here's the actual, what you see in the right here, and the, I mean on the left here. Right here you'll see the picture. And um, there is not um, people in, in the front here. I added them extra by myself. I just put them in. As an illustrator, I do a lot of that, where I put things into the painting that are not really there. Um, but it just makes it more of a story a lot of times. I like to do bring stories to the pictures. And so this is one I'm just gonna, I, I, I like doing wet street scenes anyways. And as you can tell, this is the image I use and look at, you can almost kind of tell what I put in extra. So what did I put in extra was the Eiffel Tower, making it Paris. I'm not sure if this is a, a street in Paris or not, but I just decided it's going to be a, a street in Paris. And then I um, drew the people right here, drew the people in. And I, I looked I looked on the um, web, you know, I just typed in people with umbrella. And so I just found an image of these two people and I just drew them in and then also I put in a picture I looked for a picture of the Eiffel Tower and I figure I might as well put that in the back very lightly and as you can tell it's an overcast day a rainy probably raining a little bit I'm not gonna make it look rainy rainy like it's actually raining it just you know it could be drizzling where you don't see the actual raindrops um, a lot of people like to do some things too with rain where it looks like it's really raining but that's what I'm gonna do this morning and so cheers everybody <laughs> here's the, my first drink of coffee <laughs> The, the time change um, got you up a little bit earlier, I guess. <laughs> uh, we were lost an hour here today, so I got up a little bit early. And I was a little late here. I noticed I was a couple minutes late because I was like looking at um, Sunday morning, my favorite program online, and they're all about the Oscars. And so, what we're going to do here first is do the lights. And um, there is not a blue sky it's pretty much a sky that's very very overcast and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it kind of gray and i also what i want to um, show you did today is that this week we're going to be talking in my newsletter we're going to be talking about black and white pigment um, like ivory black peach black from holbein and i'm also going to be using titanium white and chinese white um, i explain those a little bit about you this weekend but or this week in my newsletter but today I'm going to be using a lot of black in this. I want to show you how to use black and make it colorful. I was always taught in school to make my blacks, mix my blacks and um, don't use black and don't use white. But I kind of changed my mind on that. And so now I'm teaching it. <laughs> so let me just wet my paper. And welcome if anybody's here. Thanks for showing up. And in my newsletter, I put this last week that um, I've been doing these Sunday morning things. And I basically, I'm just practicing myself for myself. And because um, every artist needs to practice and we just need to practice a lot. And um, usually on Sunday morning, I would like go out plein air painting because I'm trying to learn how to plein air paint. I'm doing a lot of plein air paintings this year or events. And so I want to just practice. But it's snowing actually right now <laughs> and so I guess I'm still waiting for spring to come in a little bit I thought it was here but um, this week um, we got a little bit of snow here in Illinois so I'm wetting everything because I'm I want to work my wet into wet um, things first I want to get all my soft edges in and I'm just gonna you know a little bit part of my palette here and now I'm just gonna get a little bit of gray and you know you can get gray really easily with with black you know, if you think about it, look at it, I get it black. And then what you can do is to make a colorful black is put color into the black. You know, I know that a lot of times you can use compliments to get like a gray. You can do that too. Um, I just find it um, for myself lately. And I saw that Andrew Wyeth had used black in a lot of his work. And so I just thought to myself, you know what? Um, if Andrew Wyeth can use black, I can use black too. <laughs> so that's one reason I use black also. It was a, I was a, I went to a museum in Maine. And so this is going to be my lightest light. My lightest light is going to be the sky. And my brightest color, which is not going to be my lightest light, my brightest color is going to be the red umbrella and the red sign. And so those things will be my lightest, my lightest, brightest. But my sky is going to be my lightest area. 
and some of the lights in here. And I didn't put any maskoid down for some of the lighting. Um, I will do that later with um, white paint, opaques. And so here I'm going to go in and just get some of these bluer colors. And this is a wet street, so a wet street would just definitely reflect what's in the sky, right? So right down in the middle here, I'm going to put some of the blue right into the sky. Because that's like, I'm, you always do your lightest lights first in watercolor. Get your lightest lights going. And I know um, a lot of times we, we're really into color. Watercolors, for some reason, are really into color and doing a lot of bright, bright colors. And that's a great thing. I'm just looking at some of the people's work now. I've been kind of watching some of the Elvero Castanet. And, um, and I look at their work, and they, they use, definitely use a lot of grays in their work, especially plein air painters. And so I'm just wanna, I want to kind of get into that, do some neutral tints and just try to get some grays in your work. Because if you put grays in your work, then when you go to put the, the color in, like the reds and stuff, then they become very, very bright very very bright and remember this is going to get it to about 20 percent lighter so all this little bit of um gray i have in here and this little bit of color i have in the sky it's really going to come down a lot so i'm going to try to put a little bit darker than i really assume it should be only because if i do that then it'll be the regular it'll be what i want it to be you have to make your painting look wrong to make it look right. And it's kind of weird saying, but it's true because it's dry surface and lighter. And so you got to make it 20% darker looking at making it look wrong, really. While it's wet, it'll look wrong. And then when it gets um, dries, it'll look, it'll look perfect. All right. And so now let's get our light colors in there, our bright colors, our warm colors in the foreground here. Um, again, lights go in first. And darks go on top of that. So here we're going to do these nice windows. We're going to put a lot of little light into them. And then this is a door and then right through here. And I, I, maybe I'll go around the umbrella because I want to, well, no, I can go right through that because it's going to be red anyways. And so I'm going to get a little bit of orangey yellow right here. Keeping it kind of light and then go right into the street. Go right into the, right into the sidewalk because that's going to reflect too. And I'm going to kind of wipe out, while it's wet, I can wipe out areas too. I can see I can just take out a little bit of the paint to get that soft edge. And if you watched my video this week, my Thursday night video, um, I taught you how to work wet in the wet. And here's a reason why you want to work wet in the wet is to get things like that and pull things out, push things in. You know, you can work things back and forth. And it's all about wet into wet to get soft edges. I like using wet into wet because I get soft edges. And right away I get these windshields on the cars because they're gonna reflect the sky color, color of the sky. And again, this is still my lights. These are my light lights. I can reflect a little bit of warmth in the, maybe in the front one here. I'll reflect a little bit of warmth in there too. And so I'm kind of separating the warmth from the cool by hard edge here because it's dry the paper is dry but as i'm working the background here or the side here it's all wet there it's going to blend and be soft edged so i do want to put a little bit of this against a little bit more red in this area over here like the window like the, the stores are open here and they're getting a little bit of warmth in there It matters on something like this because the cool is the background and grays. And as you're coming forward, um, you want that to kind of bleed into the ground here. And it, it's the wetness and you're going to get reflections. And it shows dimension by putting um, your soft edges. Your soft edges and make everything look wet. And the streets are going to have uh, um, reflections of what's above it. And so... I first get the big areas though. I need to have the first, I need the big areas done of light. And then I'll go in and start going with my darker darks. And I, as long as I can have hard edges for that too, like the buildings can be hard edged, but I just gotta make sure that they're not as, as contrasty back there. And as I come forward, I'm gonna get more contrasty. A smaller brush here. 
And this is just like an underpainting. This is underpainting because I'm going to be doing it a lot, lot um, darker. Let me get some of these dark, soft edges in here right now. From the, this building right here, they're going to show a little bit of this and a little bluish purple. A little bit of this. This is going to be the street. The car is going to be reflected here. And this is just a middle tone, middle tone color. And um, my people are going to be dark, except he's this person right here is going to have a light shirt on and everything else is going to be dark around it and a red umbrella. If you do have questions, please ask away. I, I, I look up once in a while to see what you guys are asking. Here, I'll just do a little bit of the wet street here. And this is the soft edge part of the wet street. And later on, I can put the hard edge part. I can do that. But right now, it's just everything soft edge. Because it, why? Because it's wet. And so get as much as you can of that. Put a little bit of red here in this sign, and if I go a little thicker, I can I can make, still keep it soft. I can still keep it soft, but I can make it um, a soft edge, wet and wet kind of, and and I'm also gonna put a little wash. Again, you always get your light stuff done first. That's what you're here for. You're here to do the lights first. Here my red umbrella. When you're doing your lights, what happens is that you can go over the line. You know, like if you miss it a little bit, that's fine because you're gonna negative paint it then with the um, with the darks. And I will have a lot of darks in here, a lot of really potent darks. Here I'm just gonna. Also, one thing I was gonna show you is that you can get your light back, like two little dots. Drop a little water in there. And you can get little specks of light. You know, you just put it makes little watermarks, but the little watermarks can look like little lights. So learn how to work in a wet wash. See, I'm just dropping little droplets in there, and it separates the water, and that can make it look like a lights on. And then the same thing down here. Then you just do the same thing into the into the street into the sidewalk. You just drop, drop water there, and it pushes away. It parts the <laughs> it parts the the pigment away from where you want it to be. And now I'm, I'm making mine a little bit lighter than the picture here. This picture is really the darks the, or the lights are a little bit darker, but I'm going to bring them up a little bit from what that is. I want to not have it so, so dark, but you know, we'll see. This is all practice for me. Actually, I'm trying to practice to see how to make, um, use black and use the really dark darks. Some really light, bright reds in here for the for the windows. And maybe in here, there's a little bit of something going on in here in the window. There's stuff going on in there. And again, you are going to cover a lot of this up to capture the um, yeah. This guy's shirt is going to be a white shirt, but it wouldn't be totally white because it's He's in like shadow underneath this umbrella. So even though it's a white shirt, you'll have a lot of the blue that's reflecting from everywhere else because it's kind of rainy. So put that in there. Let's see, put a little bit more red up here. And see why I'm waiting for this to dry then then I can go in there with my lighter colors in the background and bring them forward there is a green light back here which you know I don't really have green in this scene at all and so to put that in there I I don't think I need that to be that green so I'm just gonna go with a white a white reflection in the street you know with these dots and stuff and here look at I'm gonna take a little bit of water put it on there and get my light back in here so that lights on and then I can bring a couple of the lights through here. One thing I didn't do enough of yet is put some of this 
into the foreground here, into the... Again, you have to have all this warmth before you put the darks in, and this will be shining through your darks then. Let's see, this sign is going to be really dark, and then there's these darks behind it. All right, it's not really quite ready yet for the background, so since it's not ready for the background ones, I'm going to, here it's a little bit dry, so I'm going to work my way this way and just get some of this building in here going. So let's make that, let's make that kind of grayish and a little bit darker. And I go for the big values first, the big value of this building not the dark dark not the blacks not the windows it's the shape of behind the dark so i'm going to get that first i want to get that first and again 20 percent darker than i feel it's going to be and i'm again not getting the detail yet i'm just getting the overall building the big part of the building as it goes back it's going to get a little bit lighter more like a tint i'm putting down a tint of color not too much pigment in there if I want to show more pigment, that's fine. I would make sure that though that the color is, yeah, make it thick, but I have to make sure that the value is light. And so if I have to even add white to make the color lighter, then that's what I have to do. That's one of the reasons I would use white is to make the pigment thicker so it doesn't run so far, but then also make the color a lighter color. Like if I want to put a little white in it, it kind of makes it more pastel-like and it gives me, if it was wet, then it would, not bleed as far and that will be the, the I'm going to show that this week about how why and how I use white in my work so we go through here my background going lighter see how it's going light down back down to the Eiffel Tower back there I get really light taking light blue Kind of going in here again get the overall big parts of the buildings don't worry about the like the windows yet just getting the big parts done get the sides and this this can be hard edge because it is less contrasty so if you have an if you have a edge on something and you want it to look soft edge even though it's not soft edge make sure the contrast is very very low you know, for my Eiffel Tower since it is important to look like the Eiffel Tower I want to go in there and just make it look like it's in the in the fog like you can just barely see it you gotta make sure it's um dry the paper and looks like it is and then i'm just gonna put the lines in here and get just get the general shape i'm not gonna draw every single thing back there and you know i mean it's an iconic shape and so that helps it where you don't have to do it exactly perfect it, everybody's gonna know what that is Same thing back here. I'm just going to get this very light, very gray. And again, this is an overall big area. I'm not worried about the small little things yet, like the windows and such. Just the outer edge of that. And a little, a little bit, little by little, get it more and more. And you see how it's just, it seems like, you know, that it's coming from forward and as you go back, it gets lighter. And you also notice that I'm using grays and blues and violets back here. And as I come forward, it's going to get warmer, right? My darks are going to get really dark, very contrasty too. So they'll look very, very hard edged. And so that'll be all looking great. Now I've got to look at the pit building itself. Overall, this building is very gray. Now make it a little bit warmer, but I'm just going to go over, make it a little bit darker. And this again, this is not the darkest dark yet. This is just the metal tones. But in in reality, this is the dark of the the dark. I'm on my dark and middle tone stage, which is my second stage always. It's the big areas of medi medium and darks but they're not my detail darks. And that's my last thing I put in. It's just the overall big area, the combination of warmth and cool together. And I, I can just float that into the surface. 
I'm kind of covering up a lot of my drawing, but I'll be able to get it back once it's, it's very transparent, so I'll be able to see it. And I like to do these washes really um, nice and big so that you get the granulation and all that pigment just floating in there. I can make it a little bit warmer up in front. I'm just letting pigment float. And then it looks like we have a little bit of this dark too. And again, this is still middle tone, no details yet. Details in the fact that I am doing shapes, I am doing bigger shapes so that they look like what it is that I'm painting. Like signs, I'm going around the sign, I'm going to the side of the building. and So that's definitely there, but I'm not being that detailed yet. I'm going down through there. I'm going to make this a little bit darker. A little bit warmer. Over here, just got a little bit lighter than I wanted it to be. The whole thing, again, it's always hard for me, and even for my students, is to do the large areas dark enough. I always tend to seem to not make my first washes dark enough because I'm making it look like it's correct. You know, I, it's like, oh, that's perfect. But then if I don't make it darker than I really want it, then it's not dark enough. So here I'm going to put in a little bit darker because, again, it's going to dry 20% lighter. So you got to watch it, watch that part, really make it, make it so about 20% darker. So it dries 20% lighter. The light that's the dark okay just gotta see where i'm making sure making sure i'm doing the right parts for the for the mediums again still my medium still my medium areas and as you notice uh, when i was doing my thursday night i kept the painting wet the whole time i was painting it and now you notice here too, I'll keep this as wet as possible for as long as possible until I get this part done. You don't want to go and um, go back into it later on. You want to get everything that you're doing done then. Put that right into the, into the street here. All right, and so this is going to be nice and lit up. Now my, my cars. You know, each car over here is a different color, but because everything is kind of really dark and shiny, when things are shiny, like the street and the cars, anything that's shiny and reflective, you're not going to actually see the color of the object because you're seeing a reflection of what's above it and around it. And so the car may be red, but because it's shiny, it's going to reflect the sky more into that with a little tinge of the red that the car is. I hope that makes sense because that's really important to understand is that even though it may be a red car, but it's reflective. And so you want to make it the color that it's reflecting. So the windows, <clears throat> so it's kind of light, but let me get a little bit more, a little darker in there, I think. So each window goes kind of from a, a dark on a bottom to a lighter on the top. So I'm just going to do that with um, each windshield and kind of doing each windshield. And this is like again the medium and it will get darker because I'm going to start when I go to my my dark darks, the black, I am actually going to use black and I'm going to mix my black with colors if I need a warmth or cool and so it'll be fun to see how that works. I normally don't do that, but I want to try to see how it how it how it pans out and to use just solid black. I was I mean when you're taught something in school, you tend to follow that very closely. And I, my instructor in Shapiro said never use black and mix your blacks, and so um, to go against that, a lot of times it's difficult because you've been taught that and you mix all your darks and so you're always doing that and so to stray away from that 
and try something different is kind of a practice. You got to practice it and see how it works and see if it works for you. Here, I'm just gonna first putting in my middle tones. Middle tones come first. And then I'll start working. Once this is dry, I'll start working from the back and come forward with that. And it's funny how a painting really doesn't look that great until you get to your darks. People always say, it's like, oh my gosh. And a lot of my students are like, well, this is looking terrible. And they give up. You know, it's like, don't give up. You don't ever want to give up. Just wait until the end. And even if it turns out terrible at the end, um, still keep it going and finish it. Because you only learn when you make mistakes. You learn a lot when you make mistakes or when you do something. Like you see on Thursday when I do one in class and then... I always do a better one when I'm doing Thursday night. So don't feel that you need to get it done and get it right the first time. It can make you take you a couple times before you get everything right to where you want it. Especially if you're trying something new, like I'm trying something new today. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. I'm hoping that it works out decent. So we got some lights through here. And so I'm going to put a tint through here now little tint of color kind of doing the soft edge stuff here still and then I can put a little bit of little lines in here like it's wet and reflecting still don't have our darks yet I'm building up to those I'm building way up to those Person's kind of also got a black coat over his over his arm here. Here we have a little watermark back there, and so I'm just going to scribe over it a little bit with with a damp brush. All right, so I think we're ready to do the dark stages. So for that, I'm going to go way work way in the background, work my way forward. And so that way I know if I'm keeping it less back there and as I come forward, it's going to get darker and darker and darker. And so details first. Back here, little, little shapes. I'm not sure what all this stuff is back there, but I'm doing little shapes. It could be windows, signs, little lights I can put in there. Edges a little darker. I don't want to make it very colorful back there because I want that still to push back. Got a reference photo here that I'm just going to put there real quickly so I can see what I'm actually painting. There's a little bit of lights back here. There's a doorway. There's a sign. This is a sign right here. It's kind of dark, actually. And that's where that glow is coming from. We're gonna make it a we're we're gonna make it a warm glow instead of a cool glow. Just gonna make it a glow of light. And let's make that sign a dark blue, but dull dark blue, more of a grayish color put some black in my blue and just make it a little bit darker see I'm just getting darker and darker as I go along not too dark yet back here still more of a gray here I'm doing little people with umbrellas legs and then again don't want to make them too colorful either let's maybe put some people here this is going to be going right into dark i could put a little bit of red let's put a little red in them just to make warm them up a little bit a little dark things here 
This is part of the design, this is part of the building. And then I can negative paint this in there later too. I know it's kind of detailed for back here, but it's done then. I, I get I like to get the areas done. I don't want to go back into this area once it's once it's to a certain point. So that's why I'm doing details now, because then I know I have to get more and more detail as I come forward, and that part is done. I don't have to go back in there. It's through, finished. Here's a car back there too, and I still haven't got my darkest darks yet, but it's getting there. Watch where you put your fingers so you don't mess things up. Oh, this is all wet, so I can't do anything there. I want to get some hard edge stuff. And when I'm doing this stuff, I want hard edges, but I'm just not going to make them very contrasty. That way they don't pop too far forward because it's too contrasty. It makes things pop way forward. And I'll take some ultramarine blue here. Need to see, is anybody watching? Oh, we got a few people. Nice, thanks. Thanks for starting up this morning. Please ask questions if you need to. Even though this is not a paint along, I don't consider these paint alongs. Um, if you want to try to paint it, go ahead. The, I'm not going to give you the whatever picture you see in the thing. Just um, do a screenshot. Um, it's too much for me to do with the, with the Thursday night. This is just for me practicing. And if you want to follow along and just see how it works, it's what I'm. That's why I do it. I just want you to see how I paint in my studio when I'm here by myself painting so it's pretty much just watching me paint which is kind of a cool thing I used to love watching Irving Shapiro paint All right, there's a little bit of warmth from the sign the sign is going to throw some warmth on the building right and I still haven't got my darkest dark yet that's still coming I'm really just, um, I'm waiting for things to dry <laughs> so I can get to that point. All right, I think this part's dry, so here we go. Here's some black. I'm using ivory black and peach black. This side of the black is peach black and this side is ivory. Let's see if there's any difference. It's hard to see the difference in it because it's just so dark. And if I want to have this a little bit warmer, I'll put a little red into this black. I think black and red, and then I will go in here and then just your finger that's not dirty and then I'm just gonna go in here and use black and red mix it together and I'm gonna start getting my details my dark dark darks and that's the windows right this is windows in here so I'm at a detail stage and you know a lot of times people tend to think that you have to do it a certain way, like background first and forth. You really don't. Once you, if you just work the values, you work the area you want. Um, it doesn't have to be, if you work the lights, you know you're going to put the darks on top of it. So that's basically the only thing you got to kind of really think about is that you're going to be putting the, the darks on top of the lights. And so which ones are those? That doesn't really matter. Just go in and just have fun with it. Here's some black, and uh, you know, th though I put it down, I will p I will throw some other colors into the black. You know, I'm not going to just put black down and then just leave it. Uh, I, once it's wet, I do my wet into wet, and I do my float my pigment. I float other colors in there because that's what I do. I, I love to have the watercolor like float. I like having the wet into wet look because that's the best look in watercolor is when you let things float. And I'm identifying things on the building now. And look at the contrast I'm getting. And yes, it's not just solid black. It is, I, I put other colors in there into the water and it will make it look really beautiful to get other colors in there. But I, one thing I like about using black is that it gets me to that value right away. And 
many students that try to mix their blacks don't ever get it dark enough. And so I'd rather you get it dark enough because I, I'm more about the values than I am about the about the color. You know, color is fine. Um, if you got the right value, it'll still work. If the value, it doesn't matter what color you use, if you got the right value. Soft edge, hard edge even doesn't matter either if you get the right values. Values are, are very important. They make the whole painting. It gives you your value pattern. Look at this red I have in this in this um, in this black. Isn't that great? So, so I'll do. Well, this is still wet, so I can't go there. So let's do the side of the cars now. And so I'm going to use a little bit of blue in my black this time. And this whole edge right here looks like it's pretty dark. I'm going to come down. this side here and yes it is very detailed in a way um, because I do make it to look make it look like what it is it's a car and here's like the here's the windshield edge of the windshield and this is gonna be a tail light looks like side of the window here and I'm using my bigger brush because I still like once I get it wet then I am gonna go So here, when you put this dark in, like I'm putting black, I'm using black, but then I, I blend other colors into the black, and like right here, it's just, and it's a good, great, great, great way to lose edges, like soft edges, and to make things look blurry. If you don't know what's in there, I just want to make it look dark. I want to make it really, really dark, and I'm going to use blue in here. Doesn't mean you just have to use blue by itself, too. You can also use a little bit of warmth and so pick up another color and just float it once it's wet things will float really well together you know they'll, they'll float so watch this i'll take some red just float some red in there make it warm to make it come forward if this car was like a red car you can also do that too i can put a little red in this area it's still going to stay dark which is what i want i want it to stay dark and then here on the side of the inside of the window windshield it looks like it's reflection of these buildings is in the window here there's the mirror a light reflection of the mirror side of this then is a little bit darker again i'm starting with black i am actually starting i'm going into ivory black and peach black i, I, I just have them both together because I, I don't see that much difference in a lot of them and so I just put them all together and then here's the mirror of the car and so all the drawings there for you and then you just kind of place it in there and then there's I'm not gonna make this hard edge all the way down what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start like that here there's a tail light looks like in this really red so I'm gonna put a little red right there I don't want to make too many um, too many hard edges here I want to kind of keep that all within the dark area here first See how it's all blend together and it is dark but maybe on your screen depending on your lighting on your on your monitor this may look as black but it's not it's a very um you can see a little all the colors in there see how i reflected all the colors is red there's blue there's all kinds of colors in that black even though i started with just black it's still going to have a lot of different colors in there now i'll do the the light itself i'll just do that first with a light color always light to dark and then i'll throw a little bit of color in there too little reflection keep it going same thing with this side of the this side of this light is also has a little bit of orange in there and lights lights and plant and metallic things are very reflective and so they reflect everything around it doesn't matter what color the car is it matters the color that's around like on top here that's reflecting in more than anything else a small brush again because as it goes back I'm still gonna want to have it detailed but probably not as contrasty as it goes back maybe a little bit more blue in there maybe a little bit more blue as it goes back 
So it, it, it can still be dark, but just add a little bit more blue in here. There's the mirror. I always like to put the mirror in there. The side here, maybe the mirror over there. And then there's a little truck back, back there. Now, right away, notice how this line is just so harsh, right? I don't want that. I don't want harsh. It's going to be reflecting into the... I should where you put your finger. <laughs> and maybe I'm going to just reflect this into the sidewalk here a little bit. And because that's also wet, so I don't want it to be perfect, like on the curb here. Because this is going to reflect straight down. These cars reflect straight down into the, into the sidewalk. So I'll put a little bit of that in there. Just taking the black and the blue that I have. And then once it's wet, if I feel I need to have another color in there, I will put that in. Here there's a little um, little crack in the, or a little line in the sidewalk itself. And you'll even have things about, you know, little, the little cracks that break your mama's back on the sidewalk. You put those in there. I'll put them in there a little bit later though. I don't need to put them right now. Here now is reflections of the people. I'm just gonna put that in there. And break it up too because again some parts are wetter some parts are um, not wet depending on how the street collects the water here this red sign look at that red sign that's going to be way down here see you can tell that um, this sign right down here <laughs> right there in the bottom of the picture there's some red that's the reflection of the sign that's above so this sign will reflect down here so let's do that let's put that red down here we're gonna take that red, boom, there it is. And I'm not making it perfect, like I'm not gonna make it exactly like the photo. I just know it's red down there and, and let's get a little bit of this warmth down here. And there's a stir that up a little bit. But look at how this is like nothing now. There's really I can even go see how light it got even? I'm using black and it's still got nice and Nice and light. So I'm just gonna go back in there, get a little bit of the wheel well. But I don't want you to see too much here, so I'm gonna leave that alone. I don't want you to notice what's there. I want it to just bleed away. I, there's parts that you want it like they're out of focus. All right, so we're moving this way, right? So here we're gonna have this, this ladies. So we have the lady behind, and then we have the guy in front with the red umbrella. Just the way it was. <laughs> And so um, we're just going to go in here and do the dark here. And again, there's no um, um, pattern of what you have to do first or second when it comes to lights and darks. Just, you know, you usually do your big, big areas first and then you get smaller and smaller. But I'm at my detail stage, so I can do details anywhere. It doesn't need to be... You know, I like to do it in the background working forward. That kind of se makes, seems to make sense a lot of times. Um, because then when you're coming forward into your picture, which is basically on this one, is to the going to the right, as I come forward, I can just get darker, more colorful. And my center of interest is right there with the people, so that's no big deal. We can see that really easily. And for some of you, some of you would think that this is a very complicated scene because of all the people, all the buildings, all the windows. But to me, no painting, every painting I do is the same. It's just, you try to do the big areas first and then, yeah, maybe it'll take a little bit longer the fact that I have to do a little bit more lines and stuff, but it's not that much, it's, not, it's still gonna only take me about an hour or so because I still work the big areas first and just keep on working smaller and smaller as I go along. It's kind of fun using the black because when you're looking for a certain color a lot of times, uh, you're always looking for what color should I make this? No, I'm, I know that my darks are going to be black and then I will just add a little bit of color to those blacks to make it fade into that kind of color. So here I will put red in this dark umbrella that's right behind the red umbrella because it will reflect. It will reflect a little bit of this color from this umbrella into that umbrella and so but I only do it after, after it's wet. You know, first I got to do the dark and then I wet it and I just float it in there float it into the into the surface and at the same time I'm doing this dark 
umbrella, I also got to watch out that I'm making it the, um, so actually the point is right here. It's right there. And then the point of this umbrella is right there. So I got to make sure I'm doing two umbrellas at once. This black umbrella and the red umbrella, I'm doing the outer edge of the red umbrella. And then I'll give my ladies some red hair. I'll give all my ladies red hair. And she's got a she's just got really dark top on I'm not sure what color maybe it could be a red top but really dark because she's kind of silhouetted against the background so I'm just gonna make it dark and he has a light shirt on and so we'll do that later and I know this is like I said her interest probably should be left for last but you know you don't need to wait you can just do whatever you want as long as you I'm on my detail stage so just go ahead and do it this over here is a little bit darker to the front of him I'll make that kind of grayish all right let's get up here Let's get up there and get that little light done. I'm going to use my rigor brush for that light because it's really small. And I'm just using black. And look at the granulation I got with the ultramarine blue. Boy, it's really... One thing about ultramarine blue, it really granulates well. So here's a little line. So detail stage. And this is not very complicated to learn detail stage. Look at the photograph and copy it. That's the only time I really copy stuff is when I'm at detail stage because I would look at the image and go, okay, that's a lamp and it looks like this. And so you just basically copy that and hopefully you have the drawing down well enough that you just copy it in the drawing stage. I'll get my bigger brush. And I want to get some middle tone windows in there first before I get my black windows. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue. And then there's some windows up here that look like they're just a little bit lighter. They're not quite black. And then there's some areas in here that are really, really dark. But first I put in my middle tones. And then I'll go over that with the really dark ones. This sign is really dark. I'm not sure why I kept it light. <laughs> it's a really dark sign. And I think it needs to be a really dark sign too. So let's make it a dark sign. So here we're going to spread it out a little bit, make it really dark on the edge. Maybe they have some light on the inside of it. So I'm starting with black. Then I'll throw a little red in there. This whole area is really dark right here. And so it looks like there's, a, there's this thing behind it. And there's this little part of this whatever outer outer overhang here and this is dark and again look at how I put colors into that too you don't need to just make it black and even though you're using black paint does not mean you need use just that color just black I'm just not mixing my blacks I'm just picking them up right from my pile this is ivory black and and um, peach black so now I'm to look for this there's an indentation right here this has got this this has got some railing on here or something this is a dark usually I like using a rectangular brush for this part because I'm doing rectangles right I'm doing squares and rectangles and a flat brush works really well for that so here we have the opening Look at that, I can make lines with this brush too. So I use the side of it, and then if you use the side, and it's a really sharp, pointy brush, I can make beautiful lines that way. You see, you make a line. And I'm now working wet into wet. A lot of times here, I, I start out on dry paper because I want hard edges, and then I want my hard lines, and then I can, once it's wet, once it is wet, that's when I throw the colors in there. I can put a dark blue in there. I can make it even darker. I can make it more colorful, the black. 
and see how it's all coming together. Like this side's almost done. I didn't do that part yet. I still do that. But look at the cars. Those cars are done. And then this side is done. And I just keep on working and just work that area, get it done and leave it. Um, work the area and get out. There's a sign back here that's dark too. That's what makes it look so neat now because darks create shapes. Darks are the time when you create the shapes of things. It's identifying things when you push up putting your darks in there. It identifies like this door, this window. It identifies everything that you're doing when you get to your dark stage. Your dark darks. Now look at this, uh, this dark here for the doorway. There's like a little round doorway here, arch archway that goes in here. This will identify everything about this umbrella because it, um, it's negative painting this umbrella at the same time that you're doing the doorway. It's nice and dark on the top here, though I do want to put some warmth coming out of there. I think I want to do some warmth coming in here. So what do I do? Take a little bit of red and just kind of float it in there. I know in the picture it's actually cool, but I'm gonna, I want a warm, I want a warm um, in, interior right there. It's my center of interest, and so warm colors will identify this as your center of interest. The hard edges will identify it. I can also put cool in there too. I can change it from cool to warm, or from warm to cool. Look at how bright suddenly the person's shirt becomes. It's going to be way too bright, and so I'm going to have to tone that down even more. Because he's, and it is actually, I put, got to put red from the um, umbrella, because it's definitely going to reflect into his shirt. i use my round brush to get his pants. I'll give him blue jeans. I'll give him both blue jeans. So it'll go really nice and dark. I'll just go with black first, and then put blue blue into it. A little more work when I'm doing you know paintings for myself and I'm practicing. This is just a practice, and I could do a bigger one like this um, on bigger sheets of paper. And this gives me an idea of how I'm, because I'm really wanting to learn today about what it would be like if I'm using black and see how, if I can just start out with a really dark, dark. And actually this week in our painting, this Thursday, we're going to be using a lot of black and white also. So um, get yourself some black and some, any kind of black, it doesn't matter, ivory black, peach black, um, any of the black you want, because we're going to be using black in our painting this week in our Thursday night painting. And then show you how you get nice and dark darks. And make them colorful. And if you look, uh, when we're playing our painting, there's not much color out there a lot of times, depending on where you're at, of course, and what you're painting. Like if you're at Verano in, in Italy, there the buildings are all colorful. So then, yes, you'd use more colors. But a lot of times, um, scenes out there are not as colorful as people make them out to be. Especially watercolors. We tend to use so many bright colors when we're doing our flower paintings and all those paintings. And But nature out there, it's not as colorful as we make them. Though you can make them really colorful. And they'll still look very cool if that's your style. That's uh, nothing wrong with that. But I just wanted to, because I always never used black. And because, again, I was never taught to use black out of the tube. I use, I was made to mix my darks and for some reason we don't tend to do it well enough. We don't mix it well enough to make them that dark. And I'm putting in some details on this side just so that this is, this can be all done then. And now we're going to go to this side. Get back there. Tone things. I really love doing this kind of painting. I mean, I, I really always loved wet streets. I've always loved. I mostly done Chicago street scenes. 
that's what kind of I'm kind of known for the Chicago street scenes. And um, so I wanted to show you how I do my street scenes and how I do the wet street scenes. This is how I do them. Black. Though I no, normally don't do them with black, though. I, like I said, <laughs> this is this is an experiment to me for me this morning. I want to see what we like to use the black paint. And you're always you're always going to see that on my Sunday morning ones because I'm. I'm out here trying to practice on Sunday mornings. Let's see. Oh, he's got his hand right there. So let's make his hand warm. He's holding the umbrella. There's his hand. To wipe out a little bit because I lost that. Then I'm going to do the top of his shirt red because it's going to reflect from the red up abo above, right? It's going to reflect into this, into his shirt. And even if the picture wasn't like that, those are things you should know. Those are the things you've got to think about when you're painting. It's like, what is actually happening? What would happen if this was like, you know, real? Again, make it a little bit warmer right in it by his collar here. And it'll also make the umbrella look redder because then you know it. Man, it's like, real wow, is that a bright umbrella? <laughs> and actually, I'm going to also give it a little bit of, let's see, the side should, probably should be a little bit darker. The top. The top should be lighter and the sides should be darker. Makes it look more real. And this has to be very detailed because this is my center of interest. So I've got to get in there and make it look detailed. Underneath his arm. His arm is right there. So it needs some shadow underneath his arm. Has a fold of his shirt. His shirt has folds in it, I'm sure. And hopefully, you have a good enough picture that can just show you what it is. If you're making it up, like I used to make up all my storyboards for store, uh, for TV commercials, there I just make everything up. And then you get, you get really good at making things up and learning how to make it look like what it's supposed to look like. And you, you also learn how to fake really well. Because <laughs> if there's something you don't know what it is, then you just put it out of focus. Like a photographer makes things out of focus. Us artists, we can do the same thing. We can keep things out of focus. There I'm putting the see I'm making the street all in, in line now. All right, last part over here. Also, also, you got to give them reflections, right? They got to be reflected into the street. And then there's the lines are going across, right? There's a few lines going through here. The cracks in the sidewalks. And in my photo, this is all really dark and it kind of projects. The darker I make this, then you see the lights better. And so I really want to make this really dark, but still have a nice colors in there. I don't just want it black. And so I'm wetting it as I go along here. See, by using black and then putting color into it, then this granulates. Ivory black tends to granulate really well too, just like um, ultramarine blue does. And so there you get some granulation of the black. So you get pigment that's granulates and that's very cool. 
you know, having pigment, pigment granulate is one of those things in watercolor techniques in watercolor that really, really looks amazing. Um, it's a, it's a really neat look. So I'm going to turn my painting sideways because I, I can do lines better sideways. And I just, what I'm going to, I should practice. I got to get one of those like, um, straight edges that, uh, like a, it's just not something to use, uh, in, I forgot one of the videos he was using a uh not, not a spatula it was just like for what i would use for drywalling a um i'm not sure what that's called but he was using that and he was laying it down and just putting his brush across it it was very neat to get a straight line i'm gonna, I'm gonna have to start using one of those and even um we had a we had a demonstration by bonnie and oh, what's his name Steinberg, I think it was her last name, but she did a great job with, um, she's from Toronto, Bonnie from Toronto, and she was giving a demonstration for our, our art league this week, and um, I think she also used a straight edge to, uh, oh, she used a triangle, she used a triangle, that was really cool, so I saw that, and then I saw another person using, like, not a triangle, but a just, uh, something you use for drywalling, <laughs> a little, I guess I, I wish I know what they call those. But the triangle worked really well too. She just made straight lines with it. And um, I don't have one of those yet, but I have to get one of those because to make a nice straight line, that would be kind of a neat thing. Because then you just lay it there and you go across it and it came out pretty well. I'm pretty good at like doing a straight line with my, myself just by, by going like this. Um, I just go quickly, but I think that would help a little bit to make it even straighter. So nice and dark. That's pretty straight. I'm just going to straighten this out here too. It's a little bit darker. And we'll throw it back this way. You notice I'm just using solid black, but watch this. I'm going to also put other colors in there. And then I will also put this into the street leaving a little bit of like broken up here and there. Let this be dark too. Maybe not as dark, make it just slightly lighter. In the picture, this is all dark, but you know, I can, should I make that darker? No, I'll make this a little bit lighter, but still make this dark and let things bleed together. Because is it that important that this stays all, you know, it just, it doesn't have to be all hard edged, you know, and I actually like things to be less hard edged so that your eye doesn't go to that area so much and just let it bleed. It is a wet street, so, and you don't have to identify everything so perfectly. It could be out of focus. It can be definitely out of focus. We love having things out of focus. And then this bright color, I'm going to go in here and tone some of that down because it wouldn't be that, that bright. We want to have it a little bit, some parts a little bit less bright. And there's objects in there. We want to maybe just kind of identify shapes in there. This is the red on his shirt. It looks like it's hair. <laughs> so I'm going to have to bring it down a little bit. Any question guys let me know we're almost done <laughs> so get your questions in now before we get done we're a little bit over an hour usually these take a little bit longer than my Thursday nights because they're just a little bit more complicated a little bit more to do in them but it's just my practice it's me practicing and you watching if you want to see what I do Make this a little warm here, cool and warm. Now let's get some edges in there. Like there's some. This is like a. This is actually probably a door. But we're just gonna get dark in here. Let's get some 
thread through here, make it look like something's happening here. Take my round brush and get all my little details, super fine details. Now this is like where you do the super fine stuff. Like if there's a if there's a pattern on her, you put that in. Here I'm gonna make it a little bit darker underneath his arm. I'm gonna make it real dark right here. Maybe he's got black hair. Oh the um. The umbrella, the, the he's holding the umbrella. He needs a he needs a handle of the umbrella. See all the little details now, and then it, they just make the painting. Then all the little, it's like putting the icing on the cake, or the, actually the writing on the cake, <laughs> the happy birthday. Rigger. Riggers are the best for doing line lines. See the little lines in the street even. And all the little dark details to make this part uh, the most important. Of the umbrella. I think I'm done, guys. I don't think I see much more. Details up here railing, window. Uh, Pat, yesterday we'll be recording. It's just going to be on YouTube. Uh, it goes back to the same page, and it will be here forever and ever. And you can just watch it as many times as you like. You can see the beginning. If you do, if you missed the beginning, no problem. You can just re rewind it and start from the beginning. Let's put real dark, dark here in the background here. That way you can see the difference between the background and this person. This is all just a detail. This is how it all depends on how detailed you get as an artist. Are you photorealist? Are you uh, impressionist? That's all. It depends on you know how far you want to take it. I still, no matter how I work, I would still work it the same way in the beginning. Lines in here. sign right there all right better stop before I overwork it <laughs> I think that's enough oh one more one more line right here this is in the front and so there's a little line right there there we have it good enough and there look at that I used black and it doesn't look so bad right doesn't look so um, un uncolorful you know, I think it looks like the scene it is. I think with the rain scene anyways, it should look a little bit, a little bit, um, a little bit darker, a little bit grayer. To the sidewalk here just because it's really wet and I don't want to just be solid you know light because there will always be some stuff happening on the street that's wet 
All right, let's take the tape off and call it a day. So thanks again, guys, for coming by on a Sunday morning. I should be going to church, but um, uh, maybe we could do that later. Or I can do it on Saturday. I start doing Saturdays. <laughs> There's always something I see here. <laughs> Hold on, sorry, one second. All right, let's hit the tape off. So here we got me practicing my using using black paint. I didn't use any white in this. Um, I don't think I need reflection shininess. It was, I think I got enough of it. I didn't need any um, masking fluid to keep things white. And all the little marks I have of white, uh, you know, I can do. I, I, I mean, I could go back in there and get some highlights of little things, but I don't think I need it. I think it's got enough sparkle to it. I don't think I need to have any more sparkle. So there you have it, guys. So follow me on my um, subscribe. If, you, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my um, channel here. And then come back on Thursdays. And if you want, go to my website at beckerart.net and um sign up for my newsletter because you i'll be telling you what we paint on thursdays or just go to my website because it's also there what we paint on thursday nights we paint that together or you paint it on the same thing you paint it on your own time and then you can post it on my facebook page the group page which um last week we had a great great um working on everything wet into wet so free lessons for you um come by on thursdays all right so have a great rest of the sunday and we'll see you on Thursday.